Mr. This is Mitch Blevins, the IT manager. That's your new title for International Environmental, one of our sponsors. We'll be speaking on uh, TechSRS. TechSRS, also known as JSR 311. Um, you gotta love the JSRs, they're always changing. Ryan's going to do a um, presentation about how to, why you want to use REST, and XRS is, uh, well, from the spec it says it's a set of Java APIs for development of web services built according to the REST architectural style, and there's the URL that I get that from. Um, after listening to Ryan, you're going to want to use REST, so um, remember back to when I showed you how to use REST. <laughs> after you've got that far. Uh, what is REST? This is really quick. Um, application state and functionality are divided into resources. Every resource is uniquely addressable using a universal syntax for hypermedia links. All resources share a uniform interface um, for the transfer of state between client and resource. And a protocol that is Find a server statements, cacheable, and layer. This is what you get from Wikipedia. So anybody could have written that. What is it really? Um, to me, it means map your resources, uh, your nouns, onto URLs, URIs, Ryan will remind you. Uh, use the HTTP methods to manipulate or retrieve them. Um, the four most popular methods are get, post, put, and delete. We also have a couple that you'll use head to find out information about um, a resource without actually getting it, and options. Um, it's not limited to HTML, and actually works pretty well without HTML. JSR, as a spec, has goals. Um, the four of them are that it's POJO based, it's HTML. Centric, it's format independent, um, which means that you can send an HTML document as well as an XML document, a, a JSON document, not JSON, but that's JavaScript object notation. Um, container independence, it'll run in a web container, it'll run on its own as a standalone application, it'll run in a JWE server. And the inclusion in Java WE is the is the goal. JSR 311 non goals is what they're not even shooting for. They don't, they're not going to try to support pre Java 5 uh, because they use annotations so much. They're not going to try to specify anything that has to do with description or registration or discovery. This is, these are the things that you would find with, um, for SOAP, it would be a registry called UDDI. UDDI. Uh, they're not going to try to specify client APIs. Uh, they're not going to specify a new HTTP stack, and they're not going to specify the data model or format of the classes that go back and forth between these. So you can send anything, you can receive anything, we don't care, we're just going to try to make it easy for you to do this. Now what is Jersey? More definition. This is the reference implementation of JSR 311. Um, and as they change the JSR, it'll track it. Therefore, if you're, if you're basing anything on it, you've got to be prepared to change. It changes. I don't want to say with the wind, but it changes. Um, their stated goal is to make it easy to build RESTful web services utilizing Java. Hopefully they'll get there. What does Jersey do? Well, uh, <coughs> <coughs> what Jersey does is for each HTTP request received, Jersey will, you have a set of resource classes, and Jersey will match up that request to one method on your resource class. It'll instantiate the class. It'll inject things into the class, and then invoke the method. Um, anything that it injects into the class, it may transform prior to injection and the result that it gets from you, it's going to transform again, send it back over the wire, 
as a response. It does all that just with a few simple annotations, or a few annotations, I should say, not so simple. How does Jersey match a request that's coming in? There are four, four annotations that we use. URI template is the main one. Um, put just a package there. So if you, if you have a server and you want slash foo to map to your class, put foo in the URI template. HTTP method specifies the type of method that's coming. It's either a get, a post, a put, or a delete. Or a head or an option. It, uh, <coughs> it's actually optional to um, to fill this. You would put the method in here. Um, it'll assume some things based on the name of your methods if you don't <coughs> specify that. And then you specify what kind of MIME type you're going to produce with this method and what comes up. Why don't we go to some examples before we continue? <coughs> What I've done here is created a um, four examples, and three of them are your classic jug attendance roster that everybody seems to do. It's the simplest domain model in the world. We have a meeting that has a win, a type. Type is just a string for like a lunch or an evening meeting. Um, a topic, a location, and a list of attendees or a set of attendees, I should say, because nobody can be here twice. Um, the member has a first name, a last name, an ID, an email, and then likes and dislikes because we care about you as a person. The, the ID is actually something you don't specify as calculated from your first and last name. Uh, the reason I did that is because we use ID so much in, in REST that it, it's sometimes nice to be able to see them as something that you can uh, interpret. Um, and then we have a, a service to access that, get all meetings, get all members, um, get all the meetings attended by a given member, that kind of thing. Your normal model layer, and I won't go into that because that's not what this meeting's about. But example one is a REST representation of this, a REST view into this domain model. And when you do a, a REST app, normally you will um, design your URLs and what they what they mean, what they point to. Does that look blurry? Everyone can read that? Yeah. Um, so for example one, if you point to example one slash member with your browser, it's going to give you a list of members of this job, or at least what I predefined in the database. Um, if you point to slash member slash ID, it'll show you the details of the particular person. Um, slash member slash ID slash meetings will show you the meetings attended by that specific person. Um, slash meeting will show a list of all meetings and meeting when and type you can use to specify to look at a certain meeting. Let's poke around at it and then I'll show you the code behind it. Maybe I should start the app first. <coughs> okay. And yes, I am available for HTML design if any of you guys need a designer. We have a front page. You can view the members or you can view the meetings. I say view members. Uh, I've got three members <coughs> to find in here. Uh, Ryan, myself, and Paul. If I'd like to see a uh, person. I can click on that and I see their email, their likes, their dislikes, and a link that says what movies have they attended or what meetings have they attended. If I look at the meetings they've attended, it looks like Ryan's gone to three of them. Um, you have a date and a topic for each meeting, and if you click on one, it will show you the time, the type, the topic, the location, and who was at that particular meeting. If we want to, and notice the um, URL at the top, 
as we've been traveling through each one of these. This has meaning, it has a date, and a type. If I click on the name Mitch Blevins, it puts my ID after member, as we specified here. Um, you can see I've gone to all four meetings that are defined in here. And that's pretty much it. You see, for to see the meetings specified or attended by a specific person, you go to that person, put a slash and meetings in the end of it. <coughs> so how did we get there? It's really just these three these three resource files. I have a jug resource, a meeting resource, and a member resource. These are the equivalent view from our model over here. The jug resource. And obviously you're not going to be doing um, printing the str string buffers when you make a web application. But I wanted to keep this simple and not have to introduce anything, anything beyond. Um, for this, I use a templating language. Does anyone use templating languages besides JSP? And what would it be? Velocity. Velocity is one. Free markers another. There's probably others. Velocity is a pretty popular one. Um, so if this were a velocity template, I'd, I'd make an HTML file somewhere and read it in and uh, have velocity directed to what I'm doing as well. But anyway, um, so when I went to the first page, it was example one joke. What if I show you that again? And I got it with my browser. Use get. You see HTTP method get. Um, the, the MIME type that's produced is text HTML, and I have a method that returns a string, and I just spit out some HTML. The other ones are similar. If you look at the meeting, let's look at the member resource next. And these are all read only. We see example one dot slash member is your. Uh, the base of your URI template. And if you get that, it gets all the members in the job. And here I just get from the service all the members, look through them, and stick them in an HTML doc. If I want to get a specific member, um, I'll have to pass its ID. And that's in addition, you notice that these are concatenated together. I have this ID annotated on the method, but I have this annotated on the class. Concatenate those together and you get the full the full path. <coughs> you also see here um, passing a parameter into a method where it says URI param ID, it, um, it has an EL type similar um, syntax by the URI template, and you're able to pass that in as a parameter to the method. You could also pass it in as a um, field on the class or a um, getter on the Java bean. And then the rest is pretty much what we had before loop through some service methods and spit out some HTML. And if I want to see all the meetings for a given, given user, you just have IDs slash meetings here and do the same sort of thing. Meeting resources don't look much different. So let's go to Back to the slides that explains this. 
URI template is what identifies the URI path. HTTP method identifies the verb, and produce and consume line uh, will filter the responses and only pass to a method that will accept. If your browser says, I only want HTML, it's only going to do a method that um, produces that. If you have a method that produces plain text, um, the program will pass to that method. Here's a contrived example for a URI template um, to show how they concatenate. We saw in the previous example um, a method, a URI template on a method concatenating onto a URI template annotation for a class. One thing that can also be done is if you have a class that returns a given object, in this case a bar, it will concatenate the URI template for that particular method. So if you want to um, go to foo bar bass, this definition of an annotation will be shared. You have foo defined in bar in one class and bass defined in another class that's returned by the bar of the first class, if that makes any sense. Uh, kind of a fun thing you can do with that, I'm going to escape back to my um, example and jump from example one to example four. This is not a jug one. This is a um, URL calculator that is not anything you would do with Grass, but it's just kind of fun. Um, you have a math resource that has a URI template of math, and you have a you can pass a value into it. That's a number um, that returns a term resource. Well, a term resource has all your calculator methods. It has a plus. It has a minus. It has a time. Actually, that should be times. <laughs> and a um, divide. Let me restart this. And you pass in another number. Because of the way these, um, these values can be concatenated together, it allows you to do things like this. But I ran into a construction game until we go to the local host, map. Oh, well, I did it right there. Um, do you need to break the um, two plus two minus one divided two times. Times four and then equals and it tells you that that is to redeploy after change your thought idea. Never change anything in the middle of the presentation. Have a read-only copy. Um, that looks right. Yeah, it looks like you've redirected you to time. Oh, did it? Okay. There it is. Six. If anyone wants to check that, <coughs> that calculator. Um, you can go to any arbitrary length times two equals. I think well, we, I think we can use that. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much easier than the built in calculator. <laughs> 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 but how you get there is you're, uh, you're concatenating terms in the URL together. Uh, you're returning a term resource recursively. And in the end, you're putting equals, which tells it to spit out some <coughs> the value of the whatever it's been calculating there. Can you do it in reverse post notation? <laughs> you could probably make one, yeah. In fact, I prefer that. I really miss the calculator. I have one of them. They don't make them. HTTP method. Um, use that annotation to indicate that you're going to, um, this method is going to be potentially called by the client. <coughs> I want to say browser. If I say browser, just translate it to client. Um, yeah. You have some magic, uh, magic method names down here. So if you start the method name with a um, HTTP verb like post you don't need to specify it up here. <coughs> it's just a small convenience. 